Hey, I'm Joel. Uh, it's a kind of chilly and I'm in Stockholm, which is one of my favorite cities in the world. It's Wednesday, it's the worst day of the week, but it's the best day to go for a run. And today you're coming with me. Let's go. Right, today. Hello. Hey, I'm running with Thomas. How do you pronounce your last name, Thomas? Kvapil. All right, okay. I'm not even going to try and get that right. Uh, Thomas Kvapil. That's All right. not that bad. No. The, uh, Thomas has got a very interesting running story. The harder and tougher and the more difficult, the more gruesome, the better, right? Yeah, something like that. So, Putting some mud and some large hills to it as well. Oh, yeah, you like hills? Yeah. <laughs> but today we're not gonna, it's going to be pretty flat around the water here in Stockholm. And uh, yesterday you ran how far? Uh, yesterday I training with my, uh, I'm a part of something called TSM running. Okay. It's Team Stockholm Marathon. Right. So it's, I'm a coach for one of the groups, so we're preparing for the Stockholm Marathon. So every Sunday we have a long run, and right. yesterday we had 30 kilometers, including some intervals. Okay. Oh, really? Halfway into it, uh, yeah. It was oh. a pretty And what sort tough. of pace, around this kind of slow uh, pace? It's, it's uh, five minutes per kilometer. Okay. And then, of course, the intervals is faster. Yeah. And how many people in the group came out? Uh, yesterday it was, uh, I think, like 12, 15 people. Okay. Usually we're around uh, between 20 and 30 people. So how did you start running? How did you get into it? I actually, when I was a kid, I did a lot of sports. I would say everything except football and ice hockey. Oh, so except I those things? You except you, um, okay. I, I tried everything, I would say. Uh -huh. And. Uh, uh, I think it was 11, 12 years old. I started comp competing in bicycling. Right. Uh, and uh, I did that on a very high level for my age group. So I was one of the, I say, one of the best in Sweden. Really? Yeah. When I was a kid, like 13, 14, 15 years old. Okay. And this is road biking, right? Road bike, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Mountain bike wasn't even invented at that time. <laughs> and. Um, and I quit with that and started with triathlon instead. And I think that was in 86, 87, somewhere okay. around that. How sort of old were you at that time? Like late teens, I guess? Yeah, 18, 19 years old. Because I guess triathlon hasn't been around all that long, has it? No, it's actually started. I was in the, I was in the second club in Sweden. Really? That started up, yeah. Right. And so, so And then you have to have some running. So, so often it was, I was, uh, you started with swimming, right? And I was one of the last up from the water because swimming was not my thing. Bicycling was, so usually I got the fastest time on the bicycling part. Right. And then I still had the endurance to, you know, still pass people on the running part. The only triathlons I've ever done, my swimming sucks. <laughs> yeah. And I normally try and catch people on the run, but the, yeah. the swimming I find very difficult. Yeah. But it, I, I competed in the Olympic distance, so it's. Is it uh, 1,500 meters yeah. swimming for 40 kilometers biking and then 10K of running. Okay. So, oh. And how often, back then, how often were you doing it? Like, and how serious were you? You weren't professional, you were just an amateur. No, I, I, just an athlete. But still, I would say in the top 10 in Sweden. Really? Yeah, for my age group, so. Wow. Yeah. So how did that progress into the more hardcore stuff you do now? Uh, then, you know, I've been doing sports a lot of years, you know, usually every Friday, Saturday when my friends, they were out, you know, drinking beer, doing that kind of stuff. Right. I was home preparing for all uh, races. That's unusual for a Swede yeah. that you weren't out with them drinking beer, I found Yeah. It. So I actually, when I was turn 20, 25, somewhere around that, I... Uh, Take, took that part instead. <laughs> right, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so I had, yeah. And also, uh, I'm working as a DJ. Yeah, you're a nightclub. And yeah, and I, at DJ. that time I was working in nightclub, so I was doing like working to five o'clock in the morning, so you couldn't race the second day, so. Yeah. So I went a little bit away from sport. Okay. I could say. And then, uh, but always every year I ran. Um, a race called Midnight Sloppet here in in Stockholm. Okay, what what kind of race is that? It's a 10k race, and it starts uh, in the evening, uh, Saturday. Right. Saturday evening in the summer in August. Okay. So always in April. I bought new shoes. 
<laughs> this, uh, I decided this is the year I'm going to start training again right. properly. And, uh, and then on the starting line in August, looked at my shoes and like, they look very shiny. <laughs> and I haven't used them hardly at all. So uh -huh. I struggled to do the 10K, 10K I survived. Uh, and I did it for a couple of years. And then I told myself, no, I need to do something more. What was that tougher? Right. Go up there. So uh, to get me training, so I, I said to myself, I'm going to do the half marathon. But same thing happened there, and that was hard to get through a half marathon without proper training. Yeah, that's you know, it's a decent distance. Half yeah. Are we going I, over into the park? I think it's that, that way. Stay on this side. Yeah. Gonna look at the cars here. And uh, I think I ran it in about two hours and 15 minutes, which isn't, yeah. Not the best half, man. Not the it? best, no, not the best time. <laughs> and then I can hardly walk for a, for a week or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but then a uh, year after I said, I'm gonna do this again. And I'm gonna join this group called TSM Running. Right. Team Stockholm, where I'm a coach today. Yeah. So I joined them and I just found out that running in a group is so much more fun than running alone. That's right, yes, I agree fully. Uh, and this is uh, 2013, I guess, uh, or 2012, maybe. And at the time, I also like food and I like wine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, without doing sports for on a high level for 20 years, and uh, like food and wine, my weight was a little bit higher than what it sh should right. be. Yeah, of course, I find the same. Yeah, and uh, today is a balance, so but we can talk about that later, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so I was almost on 96 ki kilos. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's a lot heavier than you are now, right? Yeah, that's a lot heavier. And uh, so I started to to run because I. So that weight loss actually, you know, it went pretty fast. Right. Uh, and then I was at the same time also about to turn 45. Yeah. And I said to myself, I never had six packs <laughs> in my whole life. Yeah. What, I, what I know. <laughs> so that was one goal. Uh, so at my birthday, I should have a six pack. Because before that, I had a, what do you call it? Can't find the right word now. Porktum in Swedish, <laughs> where you put all the laundry and um, it goes around. <laughs> I see. Uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I'm going went to PT, and he said, uh, personal trainer. Yeah. And he started digging like, you, you're doing the right training, but you don't have the right nutrition. Right, yeah, yeah. I so he told me how to, you know, eat correctly. Uh -huh. uh, because previously I was like, yeah, runner, he should eat pasta. Yeah. So I did a lot of pasta. And that's maybe correct day or two before a marathon, right? But not seven days a week. Uh, so how did your? I'm interested. How did your diet change? And did it, did it result in the six pack you wanted for your yeah, birthday? Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, uh, yeah, I think within 12 weeks you will have a six pack, and he actually took me like seven and a half week. Really? Until I saw something. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow! Yeah. Wow. But then then I realized also that. Because I stick to that diet, and suddenly I was 79 kilos. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah. In how long? I, uh, from 96 to that, that was like maybe one and a half year. Right. But when I joined my, that PD, I was maybe 88 or 89. Right. So 10 kilos within uh, maybe, I don't know, three months, four three, months. Wow. Yeah. But I was very, I want to say, not addicted, but we're very focused. Yes. So. And do you still keep up with that? Uh, not that strict. Right. Like I said, I'm still into wine and, and uh, food. <laughs> so. Well, I think, but, it's, I think personally, I think it's a balance. Uh, yeah. You've got to balance your lifestyle with, yeah, yeah. with your training. And, and obviously running is such a integral part of my life. Yeah. I couldn't do that the running, but then again, I couldn't. I find it hard to do it without the eating and the drinking as well. 
Yeah, some people say like I run so I can eat whatever I want. And that's yeah. actually true. Yeah, that's. Uh, and I did a lot of races last year, and then November and December I didn't race at all. I actually hardly. I was not running at all, but I took a break completely right. from training, more or less. Right. And I gained seven or eight kilo. Yeah. But also the thing is, when I'm out training, running, you think of more what you eat, you sleep better, everything, all the you work better. Yes. You're more focused. Yeah, I fully agree. And uh, I think everybody should run every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And people ask, oh, but how's, what about your knees? Do you hurt? Doesn't your feet or your knee hurt when uh, when you run that much? It's like no. I thought it happens if I don't run for two, three weeks. Yeah. Then my knee starts hurts. Well, that's right. I've run for 3,020, 3,019 days, I think, in a row. Yeah, and that's I've never had any amazing. Problems. I've never had any problems at all. Yeah. No, I can't do that. Uh, I, I try to do uh, what do you call it, run strike. A streak, yes. That's yeah, right. run a streak, yeah. And uh, yeah, run straight is when you run out naked, isn't it? <laughs> I've tried <laughs> so that. We're not, not going to do that. I've tried that too, but uh, that's uh, yeah. That was for a bet. Yeah, I tried that, but I need to have uh, what say? Need to have uh, rest days. Rest days, at least one or two rest days in a week. Then maybe I go to the gym instead. Yeah. Or just stretch or foam roll or anything right. like that. Okay. So how did your training escalate then? How, and how did you get into OCR? Because again, OCR is a fairly new sport. Yeah. And what was it the appeal? Just the extremity of it? Yeah, I'm going to back one year. Okay. Uh, so I, I said to myself, I did, I trained with TCM running. Yeah. And then I smashed my goal, which was two hours, 156, something like that. And then I started my, then for the next year, I set up new goals. And uh, 2014, I said that, you know, I will run the marathon under three hours, 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, which I did. And then I set new goals, you know, for 2015. My main goal that year, 2015, was I'm going to run a marathon under three hours. Right. Uh, and there was a time also that uh, my weight was about 79 kilos, uh -huh. which actually, for every kilo you add, it's tougher. Yeah. So tell me about it. They say that every those people that have won a marathon, their weight is usually between 57 and 62 kilos. Yeah. So well, somebody told me how many minutes a mile you or minutes a kilometer you gain by losing a kilo. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. But then I run a lot of marathon, but realized I was going to be too thin. I think we have to go up the stairs here. Oh, okay. It's, it's going to be fun. The stairs. <laughs> I just realized I was too thin. Re really? Yeah, yeah. People, th people thought that, you know, you got sick. sick or something yeah. like that. You can go over here. So. Uh, so I started uh, hanging out in the gym. I think that was the same time also I started to work with the PT. Right. And uh, go ahead. And he said, you need to gain some muscles, uh, which I started to do. But at the same time I was running. So all my running friends said, Thomas, you, you're starting to gain weight, muscles. Right. That's not good for your running. <laughs> and the people that I was hanging out with the gym, they said, Thomas, you're working out as a beast on the gym. But the day after you run, 30k, yeah, and you burn all those muscles, right? So you're doing like up of the things that turns out to be zero. But uh, that's the way I like to train. And then uh, I heard about obstacle course racing, which is OCR. Yeah. And a friend of mine he asked me one day, Thomas, you want to join for for uh, for obstacle course race? Yeah. Because my main focus was the marathon at that time. And uh, I said, well, yeah, why not? That could be fun. Okay, well, what, which one was it? It was Tough Viking. Right. Uh, it's a Swedish, uh, actually now it's more a Nordic race style. Uh-huh. Here in the archipelago? Yeah, here in uh, Stockholm. Okay. Yeah. So it's, uh, 
you run and do a lot of different obstacles. Yeah. Rope climb, for example. Really? Which I couldn't do that time, so I got penalty and do right. burpees, push-ups or whatever. <laughs> and he said, we, you're a fast runner. We want to win the team part, the team competition. So you're a fast runner, you're hanging at gym, so you should, you know, be a perfect match for this. Yeah. So I started and we won the competition. Really? As a team, yeah. How many? There's four. In this, yeah, we're four in that group, yeah. Right. And I was like, this is fun, this, uh, I need to do this again. Was it a relay or were you all together? No, everyone started at the same time. Right. And then you picked the best four okay. from each team. Yeah. Uh, and I started chatting with one guy and he said, like, yeah, good to have you, Thomas. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do world championships in the uh, US this uh, autumn. I was like, what? World championships? I didn't know it didn't exist, but you know. Yeah. But if you're going there, I'm actually faster than you. <laughs> I also want to do world championships. Right. And I started like, you know, you couldn't, uh, how do you say it? At that time, there was no race in Sweden yeah. where you could, um, I can't find the right world now. Race and you know, you can get a ranking. Ra not, not ranking, but you know, you have to be one of the top ten in that race. Right, I see. And there was no race in Sweden at that time. So I started googling which race could I do to, you know, get be one of those top ten. And I found a race called Spartan Race. Yeah. Uh, so me and my friends, we went to UK. Actually, we meet summer which is a big celebration in Sweden here. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you were in the UK at Midsummer. Yeah, we were in the UK, anyway, in Wales, actually. Right. I remember a four hours drive from Heathrow, so... But it was fun. And I think I got second place in my age group. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and I just realized a Spartan race was even more for me, because it was more tougher, it was more heavy carries, more heavier things you have to drag and so on. Yeah, because you get like 23 kilos and then you have to like walk, walk up that hill or run even better. Yeah, because so. um, Spartan is more hardcore than tough mudder, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and I'm actually, I'm a global, what they call it? global brand ambassador for Spartan Race really? here in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. No and we're actually going to have the first Spartan Race in in Sweden in November. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. So how how well attended are OCRs in Sweden? I mean, how popular are they? How was the... It has been booming a lot. Yeah. The last uh, three, four years, I would say. Because uh, in the UK and the US, it's on fire. Like, it's, yeah, it is. It's the same incredible. here. And Sweden is actually... If you see in Sweden, it's like a quite small country. Yeah. US, uh, they are they are good on this, on OCR. But I would say Sweden, I would rank them in the top placements. Really? Third, third or four, yeah. So why do you think that is? Why are the Swedes such a tough bunch? Is it to do with your long winters and running in shorts all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. We have the Vikings from here and Viking always ran in shorts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think I'm one of the craziest guys. We actually are two guys or three guys in Team Stockholm Marathon that run in shorts. And you run in shorts year round? Year out, yeah. <laughs> so even when it's minus 15, windy <laughs> and snowing and ice, I run in shorts. Jeez, I ran it in um, Umeå up in uh, northern Sweden and it was minus 20. Yeah. And my eyelids froze together. I wouldn't yeah. want to do that in shorts. I always need to have gloves and a hat, but I actually never freeze on my legs. <laughs> So, and so when it comes to the obstacles, because obviously the physical test of Spartan, yeah, or indeed Tough Mother, is pretty hardcore. Yeah. No, even the obstacles on Tough Mother are are tough and very solid and you know well built. But what Spartan is, is that it's a more competition. Yeah. Tough Mother, I'm going to say, used to be more of a fun run. Right. I've done a Tough Mother as a team. And it was more on, you know, a fun thing to do. Nobody's trying to They win don't it. have the timing. Right. But then they have, they have the world's toughest mother, which is actually a 24 hours. Yeah. 
race. So there, that's uh, which, uh, which I'm doing on time, of course. My buddy Charlie, who I, I run with for the, for the channel here, he, um, he got the most consecutive miles in Tough Mudder events last year. He did 400 miles and wow. a thousand obstacles. Wow. That was the, the all-time record. Yeah. And he did them all over the world. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Also, so I just found out the Spartan race is my thing, and I, I don't really want to brag, but I think I'm the guy in Sweden, or actually in the Nordics, that have done so far the most, that, you know, started and finished the most Spartan races really? in, in yeah, the world. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. So where have you competed apart from the UK? I actually have bought <laughs> third, third year in a row, now that I have a season pass in UK. Right. So I'm going there for the beginning of May. That's my spot on premiere this year. Right. But I've been to US uh, competing. Uh, and then I've been in Spain. Really? Yeah, in Barcelona and Andorra and France. No way. Uh, let me see. In uh, Vienna, which is uh, Austria. Yeah. Austria, yeah. <laughs> and also Tyrol, which also is Austria. In Germany. Wow. Uh, so how many races have you done? In total for Spartan, I would say 25, I don't think that's well, enough. You, you must be a, 25 or 38 races. And you must be famous in the Spartan community. <laughs> yeah, some, uh, some parts, yes, I would say. So how old are you, Thomas? I'm actually, I, uh, just two weeks ago, I turned 50. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, and See? until... Uh, and until last season, I was actually competing in the elite. Really? So yes, yeah, so I was competing against guys that was half my age, which that's actually could be a father too. That's fantastic. Yeah. And you're still kicking their ass and showing. Yeah, I'm them, trying to. Showing him who's who. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's incredible. And I think it's. So you're in the best shape of your life, do you think? Mm, we don't not, have a six pack, right? But like. Yeah. Apart from that. I, it's, yeah, six packs maybe still somewhere. Everyone. <laughs> thing is that everyone has a six pack. Yeah. The thing is that it's not shown on every person. Yeah, yeah mine's uh, buried a little deep at the moment. Yeah. So I'm not yet in my best shape, but uh, I'm planning to be there within uh, two months. That's incredible. You're yeah. 50 and you're competing at that level because Spart yeah. the um, Spartan race is a pretty hardcore and they give you pretty tough penalties if you don't. Yeah, yeah. Every. Complete. Every. What is it? Every obstacle that you don't complete, you have to do 30 burpees. Oh, so, oh that's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and and how many obstacles are there per lap? Uh, it, it depends on, they have like, you know, three different starting levels. I always say it's called a sprint, which is actually 5K to 13K. Could be somewhere around that. And that's, you know, for, it's called a sprint. Yeah. Then you have the super, uh, which is more a power thing. So it's between 13K and 20K. Uh, <laughs> and then you have the beast, which is actually a half marathon and longer. Whoa. And that's more an endurance thing. Yeah. And if you really, and sometimes they have something called trifecta weekends, which I like. Well, you so do you're doing three. all three in one, Whoa. three races uh, in one weekend. Wow. So you will end up in like doing something around 50, 60 kilometers and uh, I don't know, seven, eight hours of, of racing, that's maybe amazing. even. Yeah. And that's why I'm usually place myself very good. We can do a loop around here. If, yeah, why do we do that? What's the time? Uh, or was it? It's about two and a half miles, so. Okay. Yeah, if we go over the bridge and start running back. Then we're running back another one, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so I did uh, last, not last year actually, but the year before I did five trifecta weekends. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. So how do you, what's your training like for that? Because uh, you can't train on obstacles. How do you, how do you keep yourself in, or get yourself in shape for that? Yeah, I'm doing a lot of, uh, a lot of running, of course. Yeah. Uh, because that's the base part. Yeah. And also since I'm a, what do you say, runner. And you have, I would say the people that compete, they are even usually an old runner or that you when going to obstacle, that racing that I've been doing. Yeah. 
or they come from the crossfit part yeah and just realize you know i want to do something more cardio and they start running and so that's where we're succeeding so so do you I, do crossfit as part of your training i should do <laughs> but <laughs> i haven't right uh, i know what i need to do i mean for example i need to climb a lot more right. by just bouldering actually yeah uh, that's good for your grip strength yeah but also just hanging out in the gym and do third and kind of what say do a lot of uh, different gym things uh, training in the gym uh, I actually have a program that I'm trying to you know what do you call it I'm trying to stick to stick to yes thanks <laughs> Uh, but you know, it's a full-time job. I have kids, and so it's not uh, always. And I also travel some in, in work, so it's not always too you know easy I was ask to follow you, a training plan. How do you fit that in? Because you've got travelling to races, and you've done a done loads of different races. Yeah. Do your family go with you? Sometimes yes. Uh, sometimes I bring my girlfriend. Uh, sometimes uh, I go by myself or together with other racers that I know from Sweden yeah or for example sometimes I go you know I travel to Spain by myself but I'm staying together with a friend from Germany that I know right right from right. the Spartan from the Spartan community and is there, is there a good community of people do people absolutely tend to yeah everyone you know is sharing at each other but then you might be a competitor uh, on the course but you know in the end you still share with each other Is it going too fast? No, 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 no. I'm yeah. fine. It's nice to get out. Yeah. It's a little colder than it was at home as well. Yeah, it is. Two degrees today? Yeah, two degrees windy. Actually, it was snowing a little bit this morning. I, when, when I landed, uh, it yeah. was snowing. I was thinking, oh my God. Yeah. What, what I'm I saying, perfect short sweater. <laughs> no, we actually, we had really nice weather here just uh, like two, three days ago. And it was like bright, sunny weather with 13, 14 degrees. And that was actually what the forecast was saying a couple of days ago. Right. But it, you know, in Sweden, so yeah. Well, I'm usually <laughs> sometimes making joke of, yeah, the Swedish summer is fantastic. <laughs> Last year it was on a Tuesday. Yeah. My <laughs> favorite day of the year. Yeah, yeah. Summer. <laughs> yeah. No, I know how it goes to, for example, London and uh, do some Spartan races. Yeah. Always like you know the weather forecast is going to be sunny, 20 degrees. I still bring my dry rub with me because you never know. <laughs> I did a was in Scotland two years ago. I was on holiday in Spain and actually with my family and took a flight over to Scotland just for just for the race. Just, just for the race. <laughs> so just back and forth. So how many uh, how many miles would you run a week on average just to, in your pre? And when does the season start? How season starts? I would say April May. Uh, for OCR. Yeah. Uh, they actually have the Spartan premiere in in Mallorca in the beginning of March. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be the next year. So, but what the, is this being an ambassador um, for Spartan? Yeah. What does it mean? What do you have to it's, do? It's more, you know, trying to get people to the community. Yeah. Actually, you know, try try to do a race. Yeah. Uh, and the mission is actually. Spartan, their mission is not just to you know make races. They have it's all about lifestyle, mindset. They have a goal like rip with a hundred million people from the couch. You know, instead of watching TV, you know, start get better habits to work out, yeah. have better nutrition uh, and mindset. You know, get a lot of sleep. Yeah. So you're pretty disciplined about that. You mentioned. Your diet's pretty good, but and, um, and but you like food. When you're competing in the season, yeah, like are you pretty disciplined about not drinking too much, going to bed, getting your sleep, eating the right macros and all that? I'm trying to, uh, you know, as best as possible. Yeah. Uh, when I did my first one of my life goals, which I had since a long time, I want to run New York Marathon, uh -huh. and that I did in 2014. Right. Uh, the day before that, me and a friend. Went to a nice Italian restaurant, shared a bottle of wine. Because, you know, I told myself, you know, 
this is good, you know, wine, you get relaxed. Yeah. And then uh, you sleep better. That was what I thought <laughs> until I bought this watch. Because that measured my pulse yeah. on uh, daytime, nighttime. Yeah. And I noticed if I'm drinking two glasses of wine, my heart rate, uh, my resting heart rate goes up with five or ten heartbeats. Really? Tonight. Yeah. That much? Yeah. Holy cow. So, so from now on, I, I'm trying to avoid alcohol the day before. Yeah, well, that makes but, sense. But you know, then, but if you have, you know, succeed in a race, you still, you know, you're traveling home the day after, I'm glad you're taking a glass of red wine. Yeah. So. You deserve it. Yeah, yeah. And then I, let's think, and then I'm also every year, like in February, for example, this year, I didn't drink any alcohol at all. Right. So I lost like three K, something like that. <laughs> Just and without it, drinking. Yeah, and I still drinking. Mm -hmm. Still same, you know, eating the same kind of food. But I think it also, of course you have the calories, but also that, you know, you're more well rested in the morning when you wake up. Yeah. Uh, and then when you have a workout, you can actually work even a little bit harder. So I think that's one of the things you can do. But I know, for example, I think it was two years ago, I didn't drink alcohol for six weeks right. before uh, World Championships. And then what, and that race was the worst race in the oh. season. Oh. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just about, you know, alcohol, it's about other things as well, so. Yeah, of course. So I asked you about your mileage in a week. I'm sorry, I yeah, sorry, I missed that. I it something. depends. Last week uh, until Sunday, I just had one run. That was the 30k. Yeah. Because I had, you know, I was resting the whole week. Had a lot of things to do at work uh, and some other private things. So. Yeah. But normally, I would say between 50 and 90k. Right. That's a lot. Yeah. But uh, it's always those, those long runs on Sundays, which are uh, yeah. about 30k. Yeah. That's what adds it up. Otherwise, I can go for a run like 7k. But then I do it pretty hard instead. Well, I very much appreciate you coming out with me today. Yeah. I like uh, you're what I call a hardest, somebody who likes difficult things. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's a growing number of hardists in the world. Yeah. The real people who search out challenge like if i have to go for a run and there's a hill yeah or a flat run yeah. i'll always choose the hills yeah because it's more difficult yeah it's it's, it's harder so but it's more satisfying and an obstacle course race yeah is way more satisfying than a flat race in fact some of the the most fun i've ever had yeah. has been doing I think I've done three obstacle course races. Um, it's the most fun I've ever had. Yeah. I smiled the whole way around. No, it's, you know, you can do it a different, different way. I mean, either you can compete on high level and you have a blood taste in your mouth when you go, or yeah. you can do it just for fun, together with friends, help each other on their obstacles, yeah. and just smile the whole way and just have a lot of fun. Yes, yeah, that's my... And that's what's, that's what's actually most people are doing. They make it a challenge at work, you know, we're doing this together as a team thing, as a group thing, so that's a lot of fun. Sometimes I usually like, I'm starting off in the lead wave and it takes me one, one and a half hour to do the course. Yeah. Uh, then if I get a medal, I accept, I take it and then I do a fun run, oh, really? which, may, which maybe take me two and a half hour. Yeah. You know, helping people on the course. Just smiling, you know, sharing on people. So, of course, it depends if I'm racing this sec the second day again, then I'll maybe take it a little bit slower. Well, let's uh, let's finish this video. Yeah. Up by this amazing sculpture here. Oh yeah. And uh, uh, we'll call it a call it end, a day. The end of the video. We'll yeah. go. We'll run back to the start. That is a creepy sculpture. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Well, this is a 360 camera, so, you right. so people you can see check it. that out. Yeah. Well, Thomas, thank you. Yeah. That was extremely fun. Yeah, extremely fun. Good running. Yeah. Fascinating to talk to you. Best of luck this year in your competitions. How many are you doing? 
I, last year I did 55 races. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, uh, yeah. But this year I'm going to be I'm going to be focused on some of the A races, like the World Championships uh, and uh, Europe Championships and so on. You're going to kill it. Thanks very yeah, much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks. Take it easy. Thanks. Bye. Oh. Take care. Bye.